Third party broker season is here, my friends. Presented by Batano, we're here for a quick hitter because we're here to discuss a Maple Leafs trade. You are correct in that front. It's Nick Alberga and Jay Rozo. Ilya Labushkin is coming back to the Toronto Maple Leafs. What's going on, Rosie? Not much. Nice to see some action happening. Uh, yeah, like they were saying, it just seems to happen before trade deadline these days, and we got a new accusation uh, accusation tonight. So I'm excited. Yeah, so first and foremost, I think that's the important thing to bring up. And uh, everybody on Twitter is dialed in, happening after the Maple Leafs victory, by the way, against the Arizona Coyotes. But it sounds like the Leafs and Ducks have been working on this for a couple days. And because uh, people had wondered if the uh, injury to Mark Giordano had expedited the process, it doesn't sound like it. So it's sort of complicated, but I think it's a shrewd piece of business. From what we know, the Leafs acquiring Ilya Labushkin, 75% retained. I think that's the big kicker in this entire trade. So Anaheim gets a third. And they retain 50% of the contract. And the Carolina Hurricanes, I talk about the third-party broker. I think it's going to be a theme of this year's trade deadline. Happened already with New Jersey the other day in the TANF deal. They retain 25%. So what does all this mean, you ask? Uh, well, Labushkin makes 2.75 mil. You retain 75% from that. It means the Leafs are going to only pay this guy under 700000 uh, I, I think it's shrewd business by, by Brad Tree Living. Add some depth on the back end. It really seems like it. I mean... Yeah, we wanted Tanev, and we didn't get him. We weren't giving up our first rounder for him. Therefore, you're not going to get get him. So you move on. And I really think that this, like the pieces that we're talking about that we need, like we we talk about all the time, it may not be a big swinging guy that comes in. Sometimes that disrupts a locker room. And, you know, the small pieces, sometimes these, the intangibles make the big difference. And with a player like him, a big Russian defenseman that, you know, he fills that void of defense first mentality and to give up a third and a six for him. And it doesn't even like sniff at your cap and you know, you're still available to make moves. You're not, it doesn't press you up against the cap like at all, which is the biggest thing with the Leafs. I think the more I think about it, the smarter it looks and the more exciting it is. It's and this guy's been to Toronto. It's not going to be a big shock of what it's like when he gets there. It's just every time I think about it um, more and more becomes appealing about having this deal done. There's something about the trade deadline and, and the least bringing back former defenseman. Last year, yeah. of course, it was Luke Shen. Now it's Ilya Labushkin. You mentioned it. Um, way back when, he played 38 total games for the Leafs in 21-22. Came over in a trade from Arizona, which is pretty perfect considering the Leafs played Arizona on Thursday, but ends up signing with Buffalo that offseason. But I thought he was a good fit. Um, not known for his offense, as you referenced. 55 games this year. He's got four apples. But I think he feels a need heavy on the puck. Uh, he adds depth like this team just just really, really needs and needed. And I think we'll, they'll continue to monitor the trade market over the next week. But I think it just helps slot guys in different roles and different positions, right? Like you even look adding Labushkin. What does that mean? Are they going to put him with Riley? Are they going to put him with Brody? I think McCabe and Benoit have solidified themselves. Lilligren, uh, what's his, his health at? So it gives them more opportunity. And and at the, at the best part about this, it's less Mitch Marner on the blue line, dude. I just, I can't get over it. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, it makes sense because I understand not wanting to get rid of your first rounder. I get that. But the Leafs are, I mean, look what Austin Matthews doing. I mean, th your window isn't always real big, and, and they're a good hockey team, and, you know, I think they believe in themselves, and it, you're going to make a push. So if you, a third and a sixth, fine, go, no problem. You get something that you believe makes your blue line better, which is the weakness of your team absolutely pull the trigger i don't even care what those picks turn into i don't want to hear it in 10 years well this is what we gave up it, like it doesn't matter are you really going to say no a third and a sixth is more valuable to me for the future than making my blue line better right now in the position the team's at and it's it's a no-brainer to me and i think the way he pulled it off too by retaining like nothing not taking on hardly any salary like you say it's less than league minimum that he's taking on for uh you know a defenseman who who's been around the block and uh, you know you wouldn't call him a wily veteran or anything but he's right in his prime and he's been here before and he's offering up and has continued to show that he is kind of a piece of what you're looking for so it just it just makes sense and i'm excited for it i think it's awesome it's very tidy business. Again, this team could still add between now and March 8th. But uh, again, I think it just slots everybody perfectly. Like even Mark Giordano, as mentioned, gets banged up in that game against Arizona. Yeah. Rough tumble into the boards. But it even slots him into a seventh D role. Like, I think that's ideally what we wanted to start the year is have Mark Giordano as a 7-8 type look in the Stanley Cup playoffs with the potential to elevate up the line. And 
lineup, assuming full health. So I think it helps from that standpoint. I think we got to be crystal clear. I mean, this isn't a pendulum swinging move, but I think it fills a need. And for that price, a third and a sixth and retaining all that money, it allows them to continue uh, going out there and looking to solidify this roster. I'd have to agree, man. It checks the boxes and uh, there's nothing about it that just makes you think, oh, I don't know about this. I mean, it's a no brainer. Everything about it is solid. If it, you know, nobody knows how it's going to work out, but you know, you're, you're giving yourself a chance for it to work up well, and you're not risking very much at all. So totally agree. No brainer. And uh, no, it's not earth shattering stuff for this franchise, but if you follow it as closely as we and many other people do, you're kind of excited to say, you know, for multiple reasons that you just mentioned, this checks a lot of boxes. It sure does. And that is the very latest. Ilya Labushkin is back. He is a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Once again, that's Jay Rosehill. I'm Nick Alberga. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already at the Leafs Nation 401. And we'll talk soon. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, we got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching.